How are you doing out there in internet land? Today I'm joined with Morley Robbins. Morley, how are you doing, bud? I'm doing great. Doing great. It's been a while since we chatted, and you released your new book, Cure Your Fatigue. Indeed. And so we're going to talk about that book today. Howdy out there in internet land. I see we've got a few visitors with already. Feel free to uh, write a few comments to say hi to Morley, say hi to myself. I want to talk and start before we get into the book uh, with our relationship. So do you remember when our relationship began? Oh, absolutely. It was a, I was a very, I was a man on a mission back <laughs> in like 2010 to find a magnesium product that didn't cause people to get diarrhea. And mm -hmm. it just seemed like every, everything was, was problematic and I don't. I really don't remember exactly how I connected with Jigsaw, but you were on the boards that day, that fateful yep. day. That, yeah. that should have been a five-minute conversation. It turned into an hour-long conversation, and we talked about a Pepsi challenge. And you were very happy to to uh, <laughs> take on other other brands of magnesium, and it became a, the basis of a of a relationship and a friendship that's lasted since then. It's been. A, over 10 years now and yep. we've had our ups and downs which is you know the nature of good relationships yep. and in fact our, our relationship started over a book it <laughs> a did different book. that's right and uh, we wanted we went a different route and that's fine but um that i don't i hope people understand that um i take jigsaw every damn day and have since 2010 so yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't leave home without it 
So. <laughs> Me too. I'm in Mag SRT. So, you know, my dad and I started Jigsaw Health in 2005 and it was, uh, you know, one day, you know, we're, we, we still are a, I refer to us as a smallish family business. Um, we're, we're definitely bigger than when we were when you first called. I think we had about That's six right. employees then, and now we have 20 employees. But I was helping out on the phones that day. And it yeah. really is, as I think back uh, on my life now at 44 years, one of the more uh, interesting phone calls that I've ever had. But, you know, Morley, <laughs> you really impacted me. Um, and we had really for seven years a conversation once or twice a week every week Absolutely. and i think yeah. i saw in you someone who was a voracious reader and loved to nerd out on the science and you saw in me someone willing to listen <laughs> and sort of shape part of the product line and to help you bring that what you were finding to life well, yeah, but it wasn't just that it was that you were a catalyst to get things done. You made sure that stuff was going to happen. And I mean, I can do that, but it's like what I, what I think is most entertaining is that when I was uh, a, a much younger man in college, I was not a nerd. I was not a research <laughs> geek. I was the antithesis because I didn't know why I was there. But now, 40 years later, I know exactly why I'm here. And I feel very blessed to have this um, passion for finding information that seems it's readily available, but but it, it seems to elude people, uh, both lay people and then the professionals, that's so basic to our physiology and our well-being. You, I think, are a connector of dots. It's a skill mm -hmm. that humans have you seem to have it in spades and i think the dots that you connected are obviously crucial but i think as i think back to those early conversations um you know we nicknamed you magnesium man right right and you're and like you can't, and I, I can't shake it <laughs> you can't shake it that's right well you know better to be magnesium man than a lot of other things exactly right <laughs> <laughs> but I, but I remember as you began to do HTMAs uh, and private consults for other people, you said, I'm starting to feel like a one trick pony and that pony doesn't always work all the time. I thought the answer was, we'll just take more magnesium because, you know, great books like doc, Dr. Mildred Seelig's book, uh, Carolyn mm -hmm. Dean's great book, these Absolutely. things that talk about magnesium, but you were the one, you were the researcher that made the leap and found the bridge to copper and iron. Remind me and remind the audience here how that, how that began to happen. What was that moment for you? I, I've, it, it was a really, um, it was fascinating. It was like a, being hit by a ton of bricks. Uh, I, I began to have questions about whether magnesium was the sole solution and began to realize that copper was an important mineral. Didn't really understand it because it, it seemed to be both available and unavailable or bound and unbound. And there was a mysteriousness to it that was kind of um, enticing. But I knew that it had a relationship with iron. And what I had really focused myself on in those early years was being a student of stress because we knew that what happened when, when we were under stress we were going to lose magnesium and right that, that's what got to the phrase the magnesium burn rate because it, right. people were under more stress but i didn't understand it at a physiological level why is magnesium leaving the body mm -hmm. and it was an article and, it, and there are about four or five articles that I would give my left arm for if I could have them right here. That, and, and one of those articles is, it was an Italian researcher, and I've gone back to find that article maybe 10 times and still can't find it. But in any event, I've got a pho photographic memory, and you are right, I'm a connector of dots. I've, I've always had that gift, uh, for better or for worse. And, <laughs> And the article said the greatest stress to humans on this planet is iron stress. And I went, oh my gosh, that's it. 
And suddenly I was able to connect the dots that if copper is not bioavailable, iron cannot be functional. And if iron is not functional, it is dysfunctional. And if iron is dysfunctional, it causes enzymes to release magnesium, and they're called kinase enzymes. They're all they're part of our physiology of the stress response syndrome. And it was like it was a light bulb moment. I, I I'm sure at some point I would have called you to talk about that article. And oh yeah. You, if you if you were the consummate executive that we know you are, you would have taken note of that article. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not a very good executive. <laughs> I'm a good sounding board. I'm a good, uh, I think, idea guy. I'm a good summarizer, I think. I, I think I was bouncing off the walls when I found yep. that because then suddenly it all made sense to me. And that, that, that discovery probably goes back to about 2016, 2015, yep. 2016 was when it all kind of came together. And then it's just been a, a process of, of connecting more dots around that mechanism yep. and, and if you want to talk neurodegeneration or you want to talk heart disease or you want to talk covid or you want to talk cancer or you want to talk anemia or whatever the topic is i can get you back to that mechanism and explain what the pathways are that are involved yep. in that so you're a one trick pony so, but now the pony has yeah. like a full uh <laughs> set I, I don't know uh, maybe let's get away from that analogy <laughs> Well, no, here, no, so actually, here's, actually, there, there's an analogy that there, there's an analogy that I do use. We've all been in a post office, and we've all seen post office boxes, right? And, and we know that the combination on every post office box is different. Mm -hmm. We got to have the combination for this box and this box and this box and this box. Mm -hmm. Well, when I was in college, I worked at the student union. At, at one point, I was in charge of the student union. There's a scary thought. You know, in my senior year, I ran the student union. That's like, whoa, what kind of school was that? But, um, but in the early years, we worked in the mail room, which was in the student union. Well, if you're on the outside of the mailbox, you have to know the combination. But if you're around the work side, you have access to all the mailboxes. And that's what copper iron dysregulation does. It gives you access to all the mailboxes you don't need the combination. And that's where a lot of practitioners get hung up. They think they need to know the combination to left arm cancer or, you know, right elbow lymphoma or whatever. It's like, oh. no, you don't. You just need to know what the, what the uh, approach is to deal from the work side, not from the combination side. So how is it going reaching... So for those that don't know, Morley has a website, rcp123.org, easiest way to type it in, or the rootcauseprotocol.com. And one of the things that they offer are classes for uh, practitioners slash root cause protocol certification. And right. Morley, for years, you kind of went back and forth between you got to, you know, the practitioners aren't going to get it. They're too steeped in what they, uh, you know, learned in medical school. Whereas you have holistic healers that, you know, are, you know, not traditionally trained, not, you know, trained. How, how is it going in the RCP certification courses? Are you still getting a balance? It is a balance and, yeah. and, and it's getting bigger and bigger. Um, the, the class size in uh, like 2013, uh, the, the, we're just now open to enrollment for group 15. Group 15. So, Group 15. So group 13 had 60 new students in it. Six zero? Six zero. Group wow. 14. Group 14 had 99 students. And so we're we're bracing ourselves for like 150 to 200 in group 15. Now the, That's the doors incredible. just opened up at midnight, mid, midnight today, and we've already got three people who signed up signed up today that's great yeah. well yeah. um you know let's go back to the sort of the history for the first five years when morley and i were chatting I felt like he would 
because he would love to say you're never gonna you're never gonna believe what I read today. Uh, for those that don't know, Morley goes wakes up real early, goes down to his local Starbucks with a stack of research, you know, three inches deep. Uh, believe me, his printer is. Uh, <laughs> how many printers have you been through in the last ten years? Six, six, printers. six. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> I'm like Morley. Can't you just read this electronically? He goes, Nope. I gotta, I gotta use paper and pen. Yeah, I bet you still have your green pen and your red pen on you, don't you? <laughs> Look at that, folks. Come on. <laughs> Not planned. Come on, you know? Not planned. I'm so predictable. But exactly. Well, you know, you're a creature of habit. I love it. So Morley okay. forever would say, notes, I finally you know? figured it out. Yeah, there we go. There's the note card. <clears throat> and I kept telling him, I was like, well, you keep changing. This was before there was anything called the root cause protocol, by the way. I was like, well, how do you keep finding new stuff that sort of changes the dynamic? You're never going to be up. Cause I was trying to help him. Like I'll help, I'll try and help you, you know, create a business. Um, yeah. you know, be, yeah. so I was almost like a business advisor. Um, but the, the business kept changing <laughs> because he yeah. kept researching. And I probably said, Morley, one of these days, you're going to have to stop researching, which, you know, that's like you asking no, you, a you, human. You did say that. You did. I did. You said, you've got to stop. you just you got to stop. stop. <laughs> but here, here's the interesting thing. To his credit, he didn't stop and he hasn't stopped. But in 2016, I searched my inbox today. And that's the first mention that I have of the word, word ceruloplasmin. And oh, I wow. have, okay. I, I have the first mention I have is me ordering a lab test. Uh, Cause you were probably like, Patrick, get your ceruloplasmin tested. Let's, let's sure. check this out. This is this yeah. amazing thing. that's very difficult to say, but it's an extremely <laughs> important copper protein that basically runs the show. Um, and, and you've through the years created some just great metaphors. I think one of my favorites, which I, I found in the book, and I'm glad you're still using it, that iron, unchaperoned iron is like a four-year-old in the ha with a hammer running around right. inside your body. And I remember the first time that you said that, I was like, you got to keep that one. And that was probably five, six years ago. So oh, my yes. point is, in the last five years since 2016, that really kind of was the birth of what you now call the root cause protocol. And you've just consistently stabilized it and stabilized it and stabilized it. Um, you know, you and I, we don't have our uh, weekly chats anymore. But as I read through the book, I was excited to see a lot of familiarity of oh, yeah. things when the root cause protocol first formally was introduced, sort of. 2017, 2018. And I was like, going back to my business advisory roots, now you have something that is stable. You know, you're not shifting the ground for all the RCP certified coaches. You're not shifting, you're not changing the scene for all the people that are trying to follow the root cause protocol. You really have nailed it. And I guess the whole point would be that's a really good sign because Morley, if he found something new, would not hesitate for one second to blow up the RCP and change it right. because you simply right. are a man in search of the truth. Well, yeah, and I appreciate your saying that. The The goal has been to, it really, it, it grew out of a conversation with Dr. Liz, uh, who's a, she's a 40 year veteran of being a chiropractor. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, there's gotta be a simpler way to solve these problems. It just the, the the naturalist in her was was drawn to that, and it, and so you had this tension. It's not just magnesium, but it needs to be simple, and that's what were sort of the the uh, the two stress points for coming up with the RCP. And we could easily have identified seventy five different supplements. That that would have been no problem. It was mm -hmm. getting it down to maybe a dozen that that mm -hmm. would be predictable and would deliver the results. And again, the, the whole objective is, you know, the, the RCP, it may not be the perfect solution, but it's a hell of a good start. Yeah. And, it, and it really get, it gets the metabolism stabilized and it gives people's body a chance to um, gain its own momentum. The, the, the phrase that I'm using more recently, again, post-COVID is, 
ignore the enemies, ignite the energy. Yeah. Oh, and, that's good. Ignore yeah, so the, the enemies, ignite, ignite the energy. And yeah. that, fit, that fits into something that you have been saying for a long time about there's bugs and parasites and all sorts of stuff that were constantly being attacked by whether right. it's COVID or anything else. The point is our immune system has always been under assault. And when we feed it the right fuel, which basically right. comes into our balance of magnesium, iron, copper, and the function of ceruloplasmin and ferro ferrooxidase, I almost, almost forgot how to say it, right? Oh. The ferrooxidase yeah. function, FOX. Right. That's how we beat anything. Exactly. And, and what people don't, maybe they don't realize, and where I learned this is from Jerry Tennant, very gifted physician who uh, has a, a book called Healing is Voltage. And, it's, and the whole premise of this program is it's about a bell-shaped curve of energy production based on pH. And when our body is at optimal pH of 7, that's the peak of energy production. Mm. But, but when it drops off, either way, either it gets more acidic or it gets more alkaline, energy production drops off, and that's when the pathogens wake up. Yeah. That's it doesn't matter whether it's parasites or bacteria or whatever. That that it's the energy loss that leads to their waking up. Well, yeah. why don't we just focus on making energy and keep them asleep? Yep. One of the things you said in your book, um, uh, looking into the distant past to understand the present. Everybody wants to know what's new. Truth be told, I've learned from a day spent with a brilliant marketing consultant that it's far more important to understand what's enduring. Do you That's, remember that day consulting? Yeah, I, I was going to say that that must be Michael Fishman, the great yeah. Michael Fishman, right? Okay, Absolutely. good. Yeah. I thought that I was, must be I was what a that little was. hesitant to name him by name because I didn't want to bring undue exposure to sure. him, but it's like sure. he hardly sure. needs promotion, right? <laughs> <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a great, great man, really good thinker. And that, that I, I remember you. how that, yeah, that day changed you. And yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm glad that it, that made the book because I remember that day and it seemed like it was a big thing. So what are some of the... I don't know, kind of a weird question to ask, but I think a good one to ask is like, what, what are the, like Dr. Ben, he said, look, yeah. there's a difference between in his intro. So Dr. Ben Edwards writes uh, an introduction and Dr. Ben has been a great ally to you. He has a great That's practice true. in uh, Lubbock, Texas, and really like recognized he had a patient. Uh, I believe her name was Valerie that yep. was struggling and having challenges. And she said, well, I found this guy on the internet, which is like probably right. every doctor's worst nightmare. The exactly. guy that Valerie found <laughs> on the internet was you. She began implementing some of the steps and some of the steps of the root cause protocol. It might not even been, have even been called the root cause protocol quite yet, but there were certain yeah. steps and things to do. And Dr. Ben, very much to his credit, was like, well, what are these steps? Who is this guy? What's happening? Instead of just like, okay, well, good. I'm glad you're out of my hair. Like Dr. Ben is truly like a, a, a learner. And yeah. one of the things that he addresses in his introduction is he says, I want you to be skeptical in reading this. Skepticism mm -hmm. to me yeah. means that you're really trying to beat up the idea to see if it actually holds water, if it holds merit. But don't just be, I think, cynical was the word that he used, where it's like, oh, it can't just be that simple. It can't be mineral balance or mineral yeah. imbalance that's causing all these problems. But what are there any sort of like new skeptics or new cynics that have tried to, now that you've published this book, tried to tear it down and tried to say, that's why I said it feels kind of like an unfair question. But I know you also enjoy a Pepsi challenge. So what Pepsi challenges, if any, have been presented by people that are basically saying, okay, this book is crap and I'm going to explain why, you know? If though I have not experienced that yet, and I know it's going to happen. I, I know okay. there's, there's, even though I've had um, probably 10 or more years of, of exposure via Facebook and mm -hmm. podcasts and things like that. Oh, yeah. Um, and I have a fairly healthy following, but I don't have a uniform following. It's not, not every person that's 
been exposed to it says, oh yeah, Morley's a brilliant guy. There are people who challenge it. But the formal, I think the formal process is going to unfold in the coming months. Because mm -hmm. I think there's a, <clears throat> it's one thing to be a, a social media um, leader, if you will, and it's another thing to be a published author. Mm -hmm. And now it's like, I'm really surprised at the reaction people have. It's like one of your favorite expressions that you uh, coined or was based on a book by, uh, I'm going to blank on his name, uh, but it was, it, it takes about 10 years to become an overnight success. And that's what it feels like, is that I've, I've put in my fair share of research time uh, daily, seven days a week for uh, over a decade, but it feels like it's, I'm just now starting it's like it's like the difference between the regular season in football and then the postseason and it feels oh. like i'm going into, i'm going into the postseason and i think it'll be fun to see what people's uh criticism is see where the where they they think the weakness is because i'm looking mm -hmm. forward to having the chance to defend or to refute or to embellish or what whatever the right phrase is but i feel pretty good about being able to do that, but I'm looking forward to what others might say. And I, I've had the chance in my classes, again, hundreds and hundreds of students, many of whom are practitioners, and mm -hmm. they they don't hesitate to kick the tires and challenge and ask really penetrating questions. And yeah. so far, I'm, I'm still, you know, I've got a few scars, but for the most part, I'm doing okay. <laughs> Don't, I don't have as much hair as I used to have, but um, well, that happens, right? <laughs> this isn't yeah. the RCP for hair. Sorry. <laughs> exactly. It's I've been thinking too much, Patrick. That's the problem. <laughs> but but no, I think I think it's going to be fascinating to see what unfolds, and like even as as recently as this morning, uh, I was reading a fascinating article about how vasodilation really happens in our body. And it, nitric oxide is a part of it. Mm -hmm. But there's something called prostacycline that nobody talks about. Say so that again, prostacycline? Prosta, prostacycline. Prostacycline, okay, okay. A very, very powerful hormone. Now, now put on your thinking cap, okay? What? mineral do you think runs prostacycline synthase it must be magnesium yeah right <laughs> copper it that's is why copper. nobody knows. all right well i, I had a that's one in two about. chance yeah I, I know i know yeah the thing is it's it, the the world needs to understand that there is double redundancy in the body and what do you mean by actually that? nitric well it's just that that the body, the body is elegantly designed, right? We can agree yes. on that. And at the end of the day, the most important thing we need to do is we've got to activate a poison called oxygen. Mm. We, we've, we take this oxygen for granted. It's 20% of our air and we you know we, we know we can't live without it. Well, it turns out we can't live with it because that's what causes all the aging. It's the oxygen that didn't get burned properly. And so, it's important to know that um, there's only one there's only one metal that regulates both oxygen and iron. There's only one, only copper. one, copper. And and if you don't do that right, you're going to lose a ton of magnesium, and then you're in a state of conflict because you're like, is that a problem to lose a lot of magnesium? You have to restore it, right? Why do you <laughs> say Why do you say that oxygen is a poison? Because if it doesn't, if it doesn't become water inside our mitochondria, mm. it's going to become either superoxide. It's not super; it's hyperoxide, or it's going to become hydrogen peroxide, or it's going to become a hydroxyl radical, or worse yet, it's going to mix with nitric oxide and become oh no. And that so the two most toxic chemicals in our body are the hydroxyl radical and Oh no, and that's the basis of the free radical theory of aging that was developed by Denham Harmon in 1956, and then he updated it 50 years later on his 90th birthday. He updates that free radical theory of aging, and it's just 
it's the most accepted explanation for why we age on this planet. It's exposure to oxygen that isn't being handled properly. And it's just, that's the whole basis of the root cause protocol. Double-edged sword. Interesting. Yeah. So then... And that's, that's the beauty of it. That's what makes it so exciting. Right. And if I recall correctly, oxygen becomes H2O in... Is that complex four? Yeah, or is that a that's different... Exactly right. I got no, it. No. You got it. No, ding, 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 ding. And so well, that's been a long time since we talked about that. Why is the cover purple? I'm sure people oh. want to know. Why do, you, why do you pick purple? Well, copper is because, usually blue, right? Well, yes, but it's fascinating. The, the complex that you're talking about, complex four, it's, its formal name is called cytochrome C oxidase. Mm. And this is what makes it fascinating. It absorbs red light, but it emits blue light, which makes the mitochondria purple. And that's why the cover that's is purple. Purple. Because the because the mitochondria are purple bacteria. Now there's only, you know there's only 40 quadrillion of these buggers in our body. Yeah, I saw that number, 40 quadrillion yeah. as the, the latest they, best guess. And they need to be swimming in copper in order to do their job. So let's talk about the cover of the book because I bet there's a few more Easter eggs on the cover. <laughs> Okay. I never would have thought that the per color purple was an Easter egg, but I should have suspected it knowing you as I do. There you so go. So where are some Come of on. the other Easter eggs? <laughs> well, you can just look at look at the uh, the top of the covers. It's got the mitochondria right there. It's, it's giving you the answer right there. There you go. Yeah, I thought that's that it. might be. So that's the mitochondria. Exactly. And this should be so readily apparent to the average reader, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> because anyone who picks it up goes right away, oh, wow, this is, that's a mitochondria. And then, then, of course, the genius of the title, you know? See you. Yeah. Cure. And you, and you remember my email to you, you know? You think this is safe? <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> Who knows? We'll find out if you get a... Uh, exactly. You, and you now, know. Now, now, the, now the listeners need to know that you agreed, you put it in writing, that you were going to come visit me in jail, right? Yeah? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, and somebody's and you're going to bring, bring you a, a cake, right? Yeah, with a file, a nail file. Exactly, so you can right. Yeah. Scrape yeah. away exactly. on it. <laughs> <laughs> so... Oh let me get to, um, oh, well, actually a question that I had, and I imagine this had to have come up was, I know that you guys published a new version of the RCP handbook, what used to be called the RCP yeah. instruction manual, now the RCP handbook. Right. Curious, I mean, it's great to have that information in the book, but now it's a static thing. How did, how did that discussion go where you said, are we, should we just refer them to get the manual or should we just put it in the book? Well, we, we, hopefully we did it both ways. There's a reference yeah. in the book to go to the website and right. the website is, is where the more dynamic version is. And it was, there was a lot of gnashing of teeth about should we have it in there? And it just seemed like, I think the, the curious minds would want to know what's the gist of this thing anyway? As opposed to having the book and then, oh, I've got to now go to a website. They can just very quickly look at it. And yeah. th there, I don't think there was really a, a good answer, but we made it, we just came up with a workable answer and just yeah. give people the, the, the chance to at least understand what the handbook is and then go to the website for the most recent updates. So you and I met Larry 
Larry Trivieri, who you mentioned yes. as a guest writer. I like that. So Larry yeah. has built, I mean, a multi-decade career being a ghost writer, specifically write, helping a number of doctors and other health professionals yeah. write their mm-hmm. books. So, right. you know, what often happens for those viewers who may not know is a doctor says, hey, I want to write a book. Or a publisher says, hey, we want to write a book about this. Go find a doctor that you can connect to this idea. Larry, you do the research, put the words together, spell everything correctly, and we'll put the doctor's name on this. So you and I met Larry several years ago. What was the sort of conversation that finally got Larry and you to say, okay, let's actually turn this into a book? That's a really good question. Um, I thought he called me and he thinks I called him. So it, just, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter. No one knows. <laughs> yeah, it, there, was, there was about five years that went by. We, we hadn't spoken to each other. We, we had an instantaneous connection, not, not unlike yeah. our connection. Uh, yeah. He and I hit it off. And again, what should have been like a five or 10 minute conversation was probably a 90 minute, you know, kind of a Vulcan mind meld. And we had many conversations while we were trying to do that first book. And then that didn't happen. And then we just kind of went our separate ways. And I think it was after I made the move to North Carolina mm-hmm. uh, from, from Louisiana. And some, there was just something, either I must have gotten an email or something that would have triggered me to call him or vice versa. But in any event, we just realized, you know, maybe it's time. And we started... It was in the fall of 2019 when times were much simpler. Life was very yeah. different back then. And yeah. we, we just started to focus on this. And it, it actually became a, a point of, of sanity during 2020 and first half of 2021 was to make sure that we got this book done. And so I'm, I'm very grateful that he had the staying power and the ability. You know, at one point, uh, he, he said morally, he said, please don't be offended, but you're a lousy writer. Do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, if you say so. And if you said, say you know, so. He, he said, you know, I, I find your podcast just, you're brilliant. When you start talking, he said, just, it all kind of clicks. And he said, so I, I yeah. get, I get uh, transcriptions of your podcast. And he said that. And then what, what I was really surprised to learn is that he just sits down at the computer and he just starts typing. He's, he's like, he hears a voice talking to him about what to say. And I'm like, seriously? Really? He's like, yeah. He said, that's how I've, I've written most of my books. And it's almost kind of mystical how this book came into being. But it's like, by the grace of God and, and a lot of hard effort on both of our parts, we've got it and it's done. And it's, you know, it's um, going to work its way into the ethos. I don't think it's going to be a bestseller. Uh, I don't think it's going to win a Pulitzer Prize. But I think it's going to help uh, legitimize a lot of people's conversation with their doctors or their neighbors or their family members to say, look, why don't you look at this and see if it makes sense to you? And again, it may or may not. But, but at least the point now is it exists in a form that gives it a different degree of credibility. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's self-published. It's not like suddenly some big publishing house sought me out and said, we want to, you know, formalize your, it's like, that was yeah. never going to happen because I don't have the right credentials, do I? I'm just, no. a, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a very persistent, uh, strong, strong-willed, um, grounded with, with good research and blessed with the ability to understand it. But I don't have the formal training like my son has, you know, gets a PhD from Stanford. I don't have that. And, yeah. and it's like, I'd love, to, I'd love to have that, but then I wouldn't have the objectivity that I have. That's, that's, the, that's the razor's edge, is that I would lose the, as Dr. As Dr. Ben said, you would lose, you, you didn't get indoctrinated. You didn't, you didn't have to go through that. Yeah. He said you didn't have to go through that hazing. So then you could, you could keep an open mind about what if and what are the possibilities. And I asked very different questions than someone who might have gone through a, a more formal program. I, I think you're right. And I think that as you're talking about that, it occurs to me that saying, um, I don't know if it's a famous saying, but I can't think of the, who, uh, 
who to attribute it to, uh, other than I do remember where I first heard it. Um, Roy H. Williams, a marketing mentor of mine based out of Austin, yep. Texas, the wizard. Uh, yep. Yep. He, the phrase that I've heard him say is, if your life's mission can be accomplished in your lifetime, you're not thinking big enough. Oh, wow. Wow. That's beautiful. And maybe <laughs> what you've done, because I think one of the things that many people probably don't realize, and it kind of goes back to the don't think about what's in new, think, think about, don't think about what's new, think about what's enduring, is mm -hmm. you've really gone back to the 1910s, the 1920s, the 1930s to see some of these luminaries of that time whose research has all but been forgotten about almost and uncovered and used those as the dots to connect. Wait a second. This is what makes energy and clears exhaust. Right. It's these things, these guys. So in the way that you are essentially carrying on their legacy through your book, perhaps it's something past your lifetime, past my lifetime that yeah. that's when it, you know, finds <laughs> It, it, that's where it find it finds its footing. I, I don't know. Let me let me give the listeners a, an example of what you're talking about because I think that's that's what in part inspired me was to find those pearls of wisdom. And um, in 1924, you know, so we're just just got over the First World War, we have this luminary scientist, Otto Warburg, one of the most decorated scientists of all time. I think most people know of, of uh, Otto Warburg. They, they incorrectly think he discovered cancer, but that's okay. But he was really obsessed with how his energy made. And his focus was all about activating oxygen. He knew that was very, very important. Turning oxygen into water. He knew that was really important. At the same time, there was another fellow German named Heinrich Weiland. Most people don't know who Heinrich Weiland is. He was equally as talented, just not as well connected as, as Otto Werber. But, I, but Weiland was focused on activating hydrogen. We've got to activate hydrogen in order to mix with the activated oxygen to make the water. And, and, and so we're, we're talking about a classic Hatfield-McCoy's debate back in the 1920s between these incredibly talented uh, scientists. Well, along comes this guy named uh, Albert Svendgorgi, and people probably know of Svendgorgi because he gets the Nobel Prize in 37 for vitamin C. It's a, it's a long story about that, but let's just leave it at a simple level. Well, in 1925, Sven Gorgi writes an article and says, you're both right. Hmm. And he demonstrates how the two theories came together to, to allow complex four cytochrome C oxidase to work. And it was because Sven Gorgi was able to bring those theories together, Warburg gets the Nobel Prize in 1931. Wow. Because people realize, oh my God, he's, he was right. And, and Weiland didn't get the credit that he deserved. But it was, to me, and call me crazy, and you have more than once, but call me crazy that, that I think it's important to know that, to know the historical yeah. context of how powerful that was for Sven Gorgi to say, you guys, you're both right. Mm. And, and to understand the the shift that occurred in scientific thinking because of that. And then Sven Gorgi was just absolutely a genius about metabolism, but he gets the recognition around vitamin C, which is almost laughable. But the, but the point is the, the historical context gives us a depth of understanding about how uncertain it was back in the 20s that we now take for granted. And yet it was... It was this momentous leap forward to realize how energy was really made, and Sven Gorgi knew copper was in the thick of it, and Warburg knew copper was in the thick of it. 
But what did Warburg do? He called the complex iron oxidase. And that threw off scientists for about 90 years. And it's just... Why? That, that, why is to that? me, that's part of the beauty of the... Why? Who knows why? But that's part of the beauty of, of understanding the twists and turns of, of intellectual thought. And now we have this book that says, hey, let's, let's call a spade a spade. The mitochondria are purple. Why are they purple? Because that complex actually is blue and, 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 it, and it absorbs red light. And that's really cool. And it's like, I think people should get excited about that and, yeah. and learn that, that if they focus on energy production, they don't have to be as spooked about the enemies. Yeah. And that's, to yeah. me, at, at, this, at this time of, uh, in this time and age that we live in, we've got to move beyond the fear factor. Yeah. And and get and get into the cure because it's time to really bring humanity into a new level of understanding about how to get healthy and how to stay healthy. And what and what I'm particularly grateful for is people don't know all of the hours that we spent, but that you spent making sure that that there was that there really was a business that emerged and that yeah. there really was a a kit that people people just know to go to jigsaw and get the kit get the rcp kit yeah i wish i wish we weren't you know a thousand miles apart because i'd hug you right now for what you've done. <laughs> no what what you did to make it accessible for people because at the end of the day i in some respects i was kind of like doc you know back yeah. in the future you know the wires were closed yeah. they were connected. And, and you said well i think i know how to connect it and boom and so it's like it, it, the, the I think it's important for people to realize that it, it all I've done is facilitate a lot of great research yeah and and allow it to be made available but but you know you have have done yeoman's work to make sure that people get the best you know most of the people on the planet they don't care about Wyland and Warburg they don't that's like that doesn't turn their juices they just no. want to feel better they just want to feel yep. good right that's all they want to do. They want to take the pain away, and that's great. That's right. But 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 I think there are a bunch of people out there that do like to know about the the story behind the story. I think um, Paul Harvey was always my favorite newscaster because because then you could learn the story behind the story, and that's, that's what right. I, that's what always excited me was to really understand the um, the depth of work that went into some event taking place that we just take for granted. And so I'm blessed to have this opportunity to talk about a book that, that got started on our watch, that took years and years of effort, and, and now it's, it's actually in physical form. It's an ebook form. It's going to be in an audio form in the spring, and people nice. are, are adamant that I've got to narrate it. I'm like, are you serious? You want, really want to It should to be me? you. <laughs> oh, it should be you. You have, you have a character voice, and I think well, absolutely it should be you. It, it's for the insomniacs, right? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, having trouble sleeping? Just listen to yeah. this guy. Uh, he yeah. reads about uh, minerals and proteins yeah. and stuff. And, and purple bacteria. <laughs> He'll put you to sleep faster. Than you, don't, you don't need drugs, man. You just listen to this guy. Come on. That's funny. Well, uh, we have one person chiming in, Christina Carnivora, who says, oh, yes, yes. Morley, you should do it. Uh, and I see okay. also that uh, Karen chimed in a while ago and said hi. So hi, Karen. Good to well, see hi, you. Karen. Yeah, likewise. So uh, you said the word fear factor, uh, I don't know, a couple minutes ago and reminded yeah. me of Joe Rogan. Are you oh. getting on Joe Rogan's podcast yet? How, what do we got to do to make that happen? I would do anything to get on his podcast. I swear to God, I would. I have gained such respect for him, for what he's done of late. And yeah. what people need to understand is that I spell fear differently. I put a hyphen after the e, mm -hmm. so we can see the symbol for iron. Because as soon as we go, the symbol for F -E. iron, everybody. Yep. And as soon as we go into the state of fear, was anyone scared about eighteen months ago? So oh, yeah. the fear attracts iron. It's a, it's a scientific fact mm -hmm. that when you release adrenaline and cortisol in response to fear, you send your iron through the roof, and guess where the copper goes? In the toilet. Oh. Really? That's a, yeah. 
that's a big problem. But, but not, not a lot of people talk about that. And no. that's why I renamed COVID. COV stands for coppers vanished, and ID stands for irons dominant. Because as soon as you go into fear, you become what's called hypoxic. Yeah. And hypoxia is not being at the top of Mount Everest, although that is a form of hypoxia. There's something called functional hypoxia. And that's when the mitochondria, when these little purple bacteria, can't turn oxygen into water. That's called functional hypoxia. And then we have fatigue. Oh, maybe that's why I titled it Cure Your Fatigue. Because yeah. what blocks the what blocks the production of energy? Too much iron. Yeah. Oh. So it's just it's I think part of the challenge is getting people to realize that it's really that simple. Yeah. And it's that basic. And it's and it's minerals being mismanaged and dysregulated that leads to all of this chaos, whether we're talking about anemia or cancer or metabolic syndrome or whatever, it's it's all a continuum of hypoxia. What shows are you going to be coming up on? Do you know what your uh, podcast schedule looks like in the near term? Yeah, um, certainly doing my, my usual round with Ben Edwards, the uh, Year okay. of the Cure. Uh, mm -hmm. Got a series of meetings with Kitty Martone uh, with her uh, stuff that your doctor should be. The healthy know. gut girl for those the that The healthy don't gut know. girl, absolutely. Um, I've got a series of, of conversations with the Strong Sisters, a uh, series of conversations with Matt Blackburn. A lot of people know about Matt. Mm -hmm. um, who else? I've got um, Revolution Health, um, Extreme Health Radio. Um, I've got about 14 to 16 different shows. And if you have a, any that you think I really need to get on, bring it on. I'm happy to have the conversation because I just, the, the goal here is, I, I know you, you laugh when I say this, I'm not trying to, to buy islands in the South Pacific. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, no. I just want more people to know that, that there really is a viable option, that yeah. there is a very different approach to staying healthy or getting healthy than the conventional route. And the more people that know that, I think the better uh, we all are. So that, that's my goal. It's a wonderful goal. I would love to see you get on Joe Rogan or Ben Greenfield or Dr. Mercola. Yeah. I know we've tried to make that happen and made introductions. And sometimes it's sort of like, look, when the universe pushes back, it's like, okay, it's just not, it's just not time. Not, not the right time. Absolutely. I mean, I've, but I've maybe we to... need to knock that, knock on those doors again. You know, yeah. I think, um, it, well, now it we've got something be... to show them. There's something to, there's something that's got some tangible value. Yeah. And, it, yeah. and that may be of, of benefit to them. We'll, we'll just have to see. Well, um, are there any questions from the audience? <laughs> uh, I, let me look at some of my notes here. Well, I, I, I asked you to stand with me for an hour. We got about six minutes. Um, there's a couple little notes that I made in the book. Uh, yeah. One that I love. Yeah. I love that you chose. I, I love that in the book, in the root cause protocol, one of the things um, for, for those that don't know, you know, I did help Morley to sort of shape the language. As Larry said, he's not the best writer. He's great at <laughs> ideas, but sometimes just summarizing it and making it simpler it is, you know, yeah. well, I think we all need help with that at times, right? Absolutely. Um, yeah. A, a, a phrase that I actually learned from you years ago is to a, uh, to a smart person, to a, to a fool, a river is a river. To a educated man, a river is, you know, water moving at this many particles per hour. It contains this many forms of different sediment and this kinds of right. things. To a wise man, a river is a river. Did I, did I nail that? Yeah, Close enough? That, that was, my, that was my, uh, prof my professor at business school who taught me that. Yeah. Okay, well... One of the phrases that um, I don't know if you came up with it or I came up with it or where or where it came from in the process, but the root cause protocol is about direction, not perfection. 
or maybe it's back vice versa. It's like, it's not about perfection. It's about direction. And I think that those words are really encouraging. One of the quotes that you put in here in the book was uh, from Confucius. It does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. And I think it, it really is. I think life is about that, right? Um, this is a great comment that actually just came in here from Linda. Magnificent obsession. So appreciate your dedication. And really, I guess that is true of you. It doesn't matter how fast you go as long as you don't stop going. So whether it's exactly. Joe Rogan or any other of the number two and below podcasts, uh, exactly. just keep going. Yeah, no, I, I, you know, it's interesting. You, you, you caught me off guard with your comment of the Roy Williams comment about if you can complete your life's work in your mm. lifetime, it's not, you haven't thought big enough. Yeah. And <clears throat> what I do know is I am doing my life's work. And I'm really proud of that. And I'm very blessed to have that opportunity. But, but as we also discussed, my goal is to reach, you know, what is it, 150 million people. Mm -hmm. I'm just shy of that. So I still have some more work to do. And I remember the rocket remember, ship. Exactly. Yeah. Is still exactly. going. <laughs> this rocket ship's got, got a little bit more to go. But I but I remember um, it's it's about getting the process started. And I remember talking to a friend of mine who has psychic abilities. And and then everyone has curiosity about, oh, what's the future, right? So yeah, I said yeah. I said, is this is the is the root cause protocol gonna become a household word in my lifetime and she went into contemplation and she said not in your lifetime but in the lifetime of one of your students it will absolutely happen so i i think maybe that gets to the roy williams concept that it may take a couple generations of students but at some point i know just be, because of the sheer design of it and the sheer research behind it it's at some level going to get traction on a much bigger scale. And that's great. And then to know that, that we got it started, that's great. You know, it, it, we, we did our thing and at least, at least there's been momentum to bring it to this stage. And I'm very, very excited about that. Ashley, my wife, uh, does a lot of different things at Jigsaw Health. One of the things that she is great at is um, finding social media influencers. Uh, to then, you know, become ambassadors of Jigsaw Health. And she stumbled recently, maybe within the last two months, into what she calls a vein, if you will, you know, a vein of influencers that are following you, that are talking about root cause protocol, and are especially leading with the adrenal cocktail. So Jigsaw Health you know, we started 16 years ago. Magus Harty has been our champion. It was maybe six or five or six years ago that we introduced Adrenal Cocktail into our product lineup because, you know, we saw that you were recommending it and people were having to go buy these different ingredients and mix it all together themselves. Mm -hmm. And we thought, well, we could do that. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we've had the Adrenal Cocktail. We launched it probably about five years ago. I think that's right. And it's usually in our top five now. Uh, you know, in terms of bestsellers each month. But what's interesting is it's sort of like she says, there's this group of sort of up and comers that are, whether you want to call them health coaches or whatever kind of label you want to put on them, but they're sort of taking and shaping the root cause protocol. Plus there appears to be a big angle from Ray Pete, um, mm -hmm. who writes sure. a lot about, uh, Really, I think he's more diet related and food related, whereas you're more mineral uh, focused. Mm -hmm. But it could, in fact, be that it is one of those up and comers, whether they were a part of the RCP yeah. Institute or not. Um, although likely those names are, uh, they, they probably did attend uh, your course. Um, any any part, any thoughts on Ray Pete? Oh, Ray, Ray Pete was a very important figure in helping to create the root cause protocol. He, oh, he really? has a, a, yeah, he has an article about um, iron toxicity 
very, mm. I would encourage people to read it. It's very beautifully written. And <clears throat> he ends towards the end of the uh, article. He said, to my knowledge, no one has ever developed a diet to increase ceruloplasma. And I remember reading that sentence saying, well, I think that's what I'm going to do. Ah, and that's what there we go. The, the, whole, the whole basis of the RCP is to increase the production and the bioavailability of ceruloplasm and, and turn it over to our natural um, metabolism to make sure that energy gets made and exhaust gets cleared. And it's, yeah. it's, so it really was on the basis of that. And I think Ray Pete's a genius. It's just, I think, it, I think many of his ideas could be simplified. He's, mm -hmm. he's a very gifted um, thinker. He's a, he's a mm -hmm. true researcher. Uh, I think he got his degree at Berkeley, if I remember correctly. And just a, just a wealth of information. And I just, I tried to capitalize on that idea of it, just like, I went, wow, that's exactly what I want to do. And it was inspired yeah. by that article. Well, isn't that interesting that the work that you're doing, the work that Ray's doing, the work that Otto Warburg did 90 years okay. ago, these things, when you find them, they are a breath of fresh air. The work that you're doing through the RCP, RCP Institute is to be connect, commended. Doctors like Ben Edwards, who I know was in uh, the RCP 101 mm -hmm. video series with you. That I think was maybe, that was probably the thing that really launched and solidified RCP in my mind. You right. sitting down with a doctor who was um, skeptical and asking questions, well, why this stop and why that stop? I think that that still stands, the t I mean, that's four years old and it definitely, I think, still t stands the test of time. Uh, but now we have Absolutely. the book. And so obviously those who are on here, if you don't have the book already, I purchased it on Amazon. Uh, I guess it's available where all good books are sold, as they say. <laughs> Where, where else can people buy the book? You, Do you, know? you were, you're, you're breaking up, Patrick, just a little bit. Ah, darn it. Okay. Well, um, maybe I was breaking, I'm not sure if I was breaking up for the audience or not, but definitely want to encourage everybody in the audience to pick up a copy of Cure Your Fatigue by Morley Robbins uh, and then put your own sticky notes in it. There you go. Absolutely. So Morley, and, and thanks you know for your time. Between Absolutely. Absolutely. I really appreciate the chance to have this conversation, Patrick, and uh, really wish you uh, the best. And I, I, I know that you and I came in with different objectives in life because you came in to feel good and have fun. And I just so admire you for that because I had a different, apparently a different uh, mission, but that's okay. We, we've, come, we've come together for the right reasons. And I'm really very, very grateful for the time we spent together and, and continue to do so. Absolutely. It sounded like you were going to say a final thought. Do you know the difference between? I want to give you the chance to uh, <laughs> work that one out. Well, this is just me being uh, uh, critical of myself. But do you know the <laughs> difference between me and, and Otto Warburg? What? He only got nominated 47 times for a Nobel Prize. I think I'll, that's the I only difference. Many that's the only difference. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not too late. And, uh, yeah. you know, maybe right after you get on Joe Rogan's show, then the, no exactly. the Nobel Prize yeah. Committee no. will start uh, paying attention to you. No, no bells are us, right? <laughs> no bells are <laughs> Actually, I could probably buy a Nobel Prize on Amazon and give it to you. Let me check. <laughs> yeah, could you? <laughs> Well, well, thank you, everybody, good, for good joining to us up. today. Absolutely. Great to be thank with you, you Morley, and uh, congrats yes. on the new book. Really happy. Big, big undertaking to bring a book to life. So congratulations to you, to Larry. Uh, I know I'm sure MJ and Kristan both had a big hand in it. Um, so kudos to them Absolutely. as well for sticking by you and continuing to help the RCP rocket ship blast exactly. off into space. Oops. <laughs> Have a great That's day, everybody. Right. I appreciate it.
you as well. Thanks so much.